you very much for uh, inviting me for this discussion. Uh, I think the whole idea of different technologies and, and for AI and open banking is one simple thing that is to make banking easy for the for the people. So this may be in many terms. This could be uh, to improve the customer experience, to, to improve the services, and, and maybe to resolve their issues in, in a more uh, in a more efficiently, to improve the customer onboarding, payments, lending, and the whole suite of things you can think about banking. I think these uh, two technologies can help. So uh, you know, APIs play open banking is not a is not a new phenomenon. This is something which is there from last maybe a decade and ago, uh, and this has resolved many of the issues. I mean, uh, see an example of account onboarding. So we are connecting to Nadra uh, for verification of different identi for identities. Uh, so in, in payment space, I think Allied Bank had integrated PSO through Ohm's technology to process their B two B payment requests or maybe to facilitate their order management system. Uh, if you look at uh, interbank transfers, we are we are dependent on APIs for uh, with, um, with uh, OneLink and many others. Hubble is a new example uh, for B2B payments. We have integrated with them. So there are a number of use cases. But if you put it short, uh, I think uh, the whole idea is to to make banking easy and to you know uh, and then enable uh, these for financial inclusion and then better credit access to the masses. Right. A very pertinent points made, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, my next question is for uh, Mr. Noman Azhar. Now, sir, we know with uh, Zindagi, what I uh, could assess from the stall that I visited, there is now a, gr a greater focus on customer experience, uh, especially in banking space. How can AI and open banking be used to improve the overall customer experience? Not just the customer experience, but also increase security in open banking. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, uh, so customer experience, not particularly in banking, but overall has taken the lead now. So we can be very good at marketing. We can be very good at innovation. We can be very good at technology, everything. But if our customer experience is not up to the mark, there is nothing that we would be able to achieve at the end of the day. Primary reason is the target market. What we are dealing with is Gen Zs and Millennials who are very pertinent about what level of customer experience they are expecting from us. And to match that level, where they, for example, if they go to a chat bar, chat uh, inbox chat or Facebook or Insta or even in-app chat, they want their answers to be sent instantaneously. They don't want to wait, right? And they are not people who are going to call your call center and wait on, on the line. So linking that up, because these are uh, uh, hard times, impatient customer, and one disgruntled customer can actually hurt you a lot because they have this social media to speak up, right? And tag you right away. They'll find who the CEO is and tag them. AI actually helps a lot because AI enables us to answer their queries on a live basis. We all know about chatbots and then chat GPT is in very much discussion these days. I think AI is helping us develop the right customer experience, not only in terms of a response, but also predicting what they are requesting for. On open API, uh, we already have tools in the world which actually ensures one, two things primarily. One, easy connectivity, two, secure connectivity. So for example, with Zindagi, we have deployed the open API platform of FPG, which, which is a Google's uh, open API platform. Uh, when it, you, you, you may ask any developer or anyone who is in the tech industry, we all see a lot of ma uh, apps consuming maps in it, right? Or any Google service in it. The way we do it is through open API. So open API not only ensures the access of services, it also ensures the highest standards of security and monetization of those APIs as well. Right, sir. Thank you. Um, my next question is for Mr. Ubaid Saleem. Now, sir, being a fintech consultant, um, let's get a little into uh, the analysis part of things. What are some of the challenges and risks associated with implementing AI and open banking in the banking industry in Pakistan? Sure, thank you. 
basically, I think, uh, you know, first of all, we need to understand what AI can do. So, AI basically, uh, in my own perspective, is uh, human beings making machines think like human beings. So, whatever a human being can do in terms of threatening the security or breaching the security uh, in terms of, you know, using tools, different methods, programs, hacks to go into the systems, AI can do all of that a lot better. So, uh, in terms of, you know, the complexities involved around it, I mean, if you look at how, for example, one part of it is also regulatory as well, that how the regulator thinks of it as a threat. Uh, but the other part is the technology part of it, that how from the technology standpoint it is a threat. Uh, from the regulatory part, the way it is a threat is because, for example, when you go to as deep as neural networks, it is very difficult to unpack things because the AI becomes so complex that it is difficult to create an audit trail like a transaction trail for example. So, th that is a technology challenge, but if you look at, uh, sorry that is a regulatory challenge because if you cannot audit it, then for example, if you are using uh, AI for let us say fund management, internal fund management and you do not know what has happened. You do not know whether it was a real AI decision or whether it was a human decision, interfering human decision made by AI. On the technology side, I think uh, the biggest challenge is uh, I come from a technology background more than banking background. So, uh, for us, you know, there are there are several things that, you know, even if I go out on the road, for example, right now, I have a 1% uh, probability of a lot of risks around. And those risks, although they are there, but they are the industry is working on mitigating those risks. And those risks are like, how do you control AI? And where do you put a full stop, for example, on AI? Like there has been a lot of debate whether they will take over whether AI will take over human beings, actually that is not going to happen, but uh, still there are a lot of things, I mean this is Do a you extreme. think it is more of a narrative issue as opposed to a real threat? Yeah, yeah. So, this is an analogy, but if you come to think of it, this analogy is a very extreme analogy of something that can happen, that where would you stop it? Where would AI stop? Like for example, if you have run something, like if you, uh, Noman mentioned about uh, chat GPT, and uh, one of the, uh, you know, Twitter accounts I was seeing and the guy actually was showing that there was a bug code. Yeah. So, he asked him to look at the code and it actually, uh, uh, you know, fixed it as well. Yeah. So, it is not only that it helped him identify the bug, it also helped him fix him immediately. Absolutely. So, that is I think the bigger technology challenge that right now and the industry even right now is not thinking of that full stop. Where do we put it? it Where is do we draw the how line? How far can we go? So that then we start to, uh, you know, uh, identify the potential risks that uh, need to be mitigated. In right. Some very pertinent points made. Uh, my next question is going to be from Mr. Sohail Aziz, the CDO of ABL. Now, sir, so we spoke about a lot of te technology advancements and how can traditional banks adapt to and compete with the rise of digital only banks and neo banks. In the past five years or so, we have seen a lot of new fintech solutions emerge, a lot of startups within Pakistan. Uh, I think there are two, three different uh, uh, things which banks uh, in general have, have to adopt to really compete these new big techs and fintechs coming in place and, and challenger bank is a new phenomenon in Pakistan. Uh, the first one is to be agile. Agile uh, in terms of rolling out new products and services and to uh, maybe to, to match the customer experience requirements of the new generation in, speci in specific. Uh, the second thing is, uh, as I mentioned, because 
we traditional bankers are more focused on products and pricing and less focus on maybe in, in, in on customer experience part. So uh, I think uh, we have to change our, uh, uh, the way of thinking. So we have to be agile and we have to come out of this product and pricing, uh, you know, mindset and rather focused on customer experience and these technologies which you, which we're discussing, uh, AI, open banking and, and to blockchain certain extent maybe, uh, these are maybe uh, our means to reach to that end. So uh, it's interesting you mentioned blockchain, but uh, the very purpose of Web 3.0 blockchain technology, etc., is the decentralization uh, aspect. Uh, now we know that with the regulator being in place and even how digital, uh, uh, how traditional banks function in Pakistan, a lot has to do with the centralization of how um, money is moved around. Um, what is perhaps your policy recommendation for the regulator? Sorry, decentralization of what? So, you know, with uh, cryptocurrency, with blockchain technology, uh, what we are looking at is decentralization of processes, meaning uh, if I need to make a financial transaction tomorrow and I uh, need to send X amount of dollars uh, to uh, from one country to the other, um, how it is working throughout uh, the globe is now that there is no um, involvement as such of the regulator or uh, the government. Uh, whereas in Pakistan, we see um, that that is becoming a challenge. We have seen uh, the debate around cryptocurrency as well. What is your recommendation um, perhaps for the regulator um, in terms of, you know, traditional banks, in terms of the policies that need to be implemented um, with regards to the new technologies that are going to be available? I think, uh, taking an example of blockchain or maybe open banking, and to a certain extent an API, the role of regulator is there to, to provide a framework to really uh, to ensure that these technologies or railroads are being utilized for the for the benefit of people rather than you know uh, for some uh, uh, wrong purposes you know you know uh, these cryptocurrencies are very well known for the kind of businesses uh, which reside on dark web so uh, so as far as the regulating them uh, i think that's that's something which is required uh, to 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 ensure this particular aspect, uh, uh, I think there are there is a way there there is a way that you know uh, these uh, crypto or maybe digital currencies. I'm not talking about OBDC and uh, not central bank driven currencies, mm -hmm. but in general currencies like Ripple and all. Uh, those are being uh, driven in a way that countries are now allowing to put up exchanges, digital currency exchanges, uh, and to use it for cross border uh, remittances. Absolutely. So it's one of the use cases, but you know, allowing these, uh, allowing these uh, exchanges in, in, in a manner that those are uh, responsible and they are submitting their data and then uh, and following a certain uh, policy guideline. So this is important, I think, to to really uh, save public from those uh, negative effects of these uh, uh, technologies. Now, right. talking about open banking. So I think UPI is in one example, UPI India, they have provided a unified payment interface wherein uh, they have provided an application where customers can aggregate their account across the banks and they can use them for, uh, for, uh, for transactions as well. So I think regulator has a very important role to play in terms of uh, making banks and the uh, DFIs to follow certain standards. Absolutely. So if their standards are there, uh, I think it's easier to, to bring in such mass level uh, optimization of services for the masses in general. Uh, I can give you an example in Pakistan, there is a, uh, there is a requirement that you know, most of the transactions which are big ticket transactions are made through pay orders or bank checks. Bank checks. Yeah. So uh, I saw people running around with those checks to verify before making the maybe transfer, transfer of payment or uh, transfer of property or car. So they have no means to verify it. So, uh, you know, I, I know that State Bank once were discussing 
uh, for provision of APIs across banks. So, uh, you know, you can verify a check which is in your hand, maybe a banker's check or a pay order uh, uh, without visiting the branch. So, this is the kind of standards or the APIs which has to be prioritized or maybe standardized to, to, uh, uh, to, verify, to, to provide a relief to the masses wherein they have to go to different uh, physical brick and mortar branches uh, right. uh, for, for these services. So, I think trade and many other areas uh, are there where can they, you know, UAE is an example where they have put in a, a specific ministry to really integrate the services between uh, uh, different government entities to bring them into a workflow to, to, to maybe for, yeah, to facilitate ease of doing business. So, I, I think there is a lot of, uh, uh, I think that these things as you mentioned earlier, uh, has to be put into, so the role of, uh, into some kind of guideline or framework and this can, rather than uh, curtailing their, uh, maybe, uh, the, the, the power to innovate, I think they can help us to, uh, to, to fast track the innovation. Right. Uh, okay. Thank you uh, for those very valid points. Can I just, can I just right, sir. Uh, but in the interest of time, if yeah, you I know, think we can just uh, cut it short. an important uh, development in Pakistan, last week, uh, State Bank uh, allowed five different companies, including uh, mm -hmm. two existing banks, uh, a digital retail banking license. Right. That's uh, that's probably the biggest step so far in the open banking side that the government has taken uh, yet. Uh, there was before this there was an effort uh, to put up uh, a joint co-regulation between Pakistan Telecom Authority and State Bank of Pakistan mm -hmm. uh, in the name of third party service providers right. which were open on many to many. However, the challenge so far, I mean, there have been different regulations coming from 2007 till 2019 actually, including EMIs. The challenge has been that they just address one part of the problem. They are not addressing the whole uh, problem, which is the whole ecosystem. I mean, if I am, for example, a, a bank customer, I don't want to only use a separate app for spending, separate app for taking my salary. Second, uh, separate app for paying my car loan or insurance. I mean, everything is fragmented right now. So I think this new uh, retail banking concept is probably a step, a good step forward to integrate all that on the digital channel. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for those uh, enlightening comments. Uh, my last question for this panel is uh, going to be from you, sir. Um, so, speaking about, uh, you know, uh, Zindagi, Mr. Nomana said, and maybe you can use this, uh, give us a best use case example. Um, how can AI and open banking be used to promote financial inclusion and access uh, to banking services for the underbanked population? Yeah. Uh, because we're still a very big cash yeah, rich economy. We are, we are a cash based economy. A couple of things first to start with. We are a big, big country. We don't under, understand that and we underestimate that as well. For any single player to take claim that I am going to address all the needs in Pakistan is insane. It is a country with 220 million population with hundreds and thousands of needs and problems. Uh, we are an epicenter of creating problems, making problems for ourselves, but that problem is actually an opportunity for business. So whenever we speak of business, where is it going to come from? Is it going to be Zindagi, ABL, or any other big organization solving all those problems? No, we cannot. So the only way we can do it is create an ecosystem through open API and AI enabled solutions, which is available for everyone. A guy sitting in a university thinks of a problem in his university. For example, it is related to paying the fee, which he has to pay standing in queue and develop a small solution, he should be able to connect that solution with a banking ecosystem without knowing who Numanazar is or who is the product manager for an open API platform, right? And that's exactly what we are doing. So any startup coming in, they should, they can, so just to give you an example how simple it is, if you uh, come up with an idea, you don't need to see me. You can simply go on developers.jsbl.com, create a sandbox environment for yourself, open an account digitally and start making financial transaction out of your developed application. That is where we help the ecosystem grow because those small use cases will grow big. Many of these startups will get a financial ecosystem access 
and eventually we will lead towards a nation which will be cashless however yes one important aspect which has been considered as a major major threat was uh, uh, the taxation and hiding of economy issue trust me i have been talking working with gen z's and millennials for uh, very aggressively for last three years they don't want to hide anything they are yeah, very exactly. active i was just going to say sir yeah. that's uh, probably the generation before us they don't exactly. have exactly the they want everything to be documented and they are very eager to be very wide they are very ethical yeah. much more ethical than honestly the previous uh, uh, people have been including us uh, uh, they are very strong on moral grounds they don't want to hide if they are doing something if they are doing freelancing so i think this is the golden opportunity for all of us to just make sure that we remain there as an facilitator make sure whatever they need we provide them the access and they will change this world for us thank you a uh, very encouraging uh, thoughts indeed thank you so much for your time gentlemen